Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for January 4th, 2022. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. Today is National Spaghetti Day, National Trivia Day. So that's a good trivia point. Dimpled Chad Day, Free Flower Basket Day, National Missouri Day, and Perihelion Day. So therefore, the day that we are closest to the sun. Interesting. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. Alleluia. Our readings for today, we've got Psalm 20. The Lord answers you in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob protect you. May God send you help from the sanctuary and give you support from Zion. May God remember all your offerings and regard with favor your burnt sacrifices. Selah. May God grant your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. May we shout for joy over your victory. And in the name of our God, set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Now I know that the Lord will help God's anointed. God will answer him from from God's holy heaven with mighty victories by God's right hand. Some take pride in chariots and some in horses, but our pride is in the name of the Lord our God. They will collapse and fall, but we shall rise and stand upright. Give victory to the King, O Lord. Answer us when we call. Psalm 46, 146, excuse me. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. Do not put your trust in princes, in mortals in whom there is no help. When their breath departs, they return to the earth. On that very day, their plans perish. Happy are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God who made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them, who keeps favor forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the strangers. God upholds the orphan and the widow, but the way of the wicked God brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, for all generations. Praise the Lord. Our first reading is from Joshua chapter 3, verses 14 to 4 7. When the people set out from their tents to cross over the Jordan, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant were in front of the people. Now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of the harvest, so when those who bore the Ark had come to the Jordan, And the feet of the priests bearing the ark were dipped in the edge of the water. The waters flowing from above stood still, rising up in a single heap far off at Adam, the city that is beside Zarathon. While those flowing toward the Sea of Arabah, the Dead Sea, were wholly cut off. When the people crossed over opposite Jericho, while all Israel were crossing over the dry ground, the priests who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood on dry ground in the middle of the Jordan until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. When the entire nation had finished crossing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Select twelve men from the people, one from each tribe, and command them, Take twelve stones from here out of the middle of the Jordan, from the place where the priest's feet stood, carry them over with you and lay them down in the place where you camp tonight. Then Joshua summoned the twelve men from the Israelites whom he had appointed, one from each tribe. Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the middle of the Jordan, and each of you take up a stone on his shoulder, one for each of the tribes of the Israelites, so that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them what the waters of the Jordan were cut off in front of the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord when it crossed over the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off, so these stones shall be to the Israelites a memorial forever. 
from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 through 20. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love, as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But fornication and impurity of any kind or greed must not even be mentioned among you, as is proper among saints. Entirely out of place is obscene, silly, and vulgar talk, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no fornicator or impure person or one who is greedy, that is, an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore do not be associated with them, for once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention that what some do people do secretly, but everyone exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, sing and make, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And from John chapter 9, verses 1 through 12, and 35 to 38. As Jesus walked along, he saw a blind man, a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and he made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. When he went and washed and came back able to see, the neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. And when I went and washed and received my sight, they said to him, Where is he? He said, I, I don't know. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, Who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our readings for today. So we're skipping around with the Old Testament. I'm not sure what's going on there, but we have Joshua. And this is when the people are coming into the land that was promised to them, the Holy Land. Um, and as they come in, there is this miraculous sign, very much like uh, the, the parting of the Red Sea, which is important. The priests who are carrying the Ark of the Covenant, the very presence of God, when they come to the Jordan River, which at this time of the season is, is just full and overflowing, all of the waters just stop. They're held back by a certain um, city named Adam, and the, the priests kind of go across the, the bank of the Jordan, and all the people are able to go across. All of the people are able to go without, you know, having to swim or wade or anything like that. They go across on dry land. This is for this generation who 
did not experience the crossing of the Red Sea, but heard about it, they are experiencing this very same thing for themselves. Joshua tells, or God tells Joshua to tell 12 men, one from each tribe, to go and get one of these large stones from the actual, the bed of the Jordan River and take it with them. And they set it up as this uh, monument, as this pillar of stones that says, this is the place. This is the place that God let us go across the Jordan River without getting wet. Um, it is a sort of to be a reminder for future generations so that they know that this is something that has happened um, so that th- that can be passed on that belief and trust in this God who allows them just the simple thing of being able to cross this river without getting wet. Um, there are much more miraculous things that God does, but this is this is one of almost convenience, right? It's not a life or death situation. It, that they not get their feet wet, but God gives it to them anyways. Then we have from Ephesians, uh, Paul continues on. We talked yesterday, bit, yesterday about how, you know, how are we supposed to treat one another as the body of Christ positively? Now is more on the negative side. Therefore, be imitators of God. Um, get rid of, don't have anything to do with various things, and he lists several of them. Um, This sort of purity culture, though, um, he talks about uh, fornication, impurity of any kind, greed, must not even be mentioned among you as is proper among the saints, entirely out of place of obscene, silly, and vulgar talk, but instead let there be thanksgiving. Be sure of this, that no fornicator or impure person or one who is greedy, that is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. It's interesting to look at these sort of words that Paul has given to the church and the way that the church has has viewed that. Um, There is sort of this this element of purity culture within sort of mainline, or not mainline, uh, especially the evangelical church about, you know, let's have taking very seriously the let's not have anything to do with um, with fornication, but really does not take into account at all, let us, you know, be mindful or let's, let's get rid of any greed, not have anything to do with any greed. Um, so that's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, he also does list, you know, silliness. <laughs> um, the the emphasis here is obscenity, sort of taking the things that are good, the things that are holy, and making fun of them. Um, that's not something that we should be doing. The way that we act and the way that we are with one another is important. I think also it's important to remember that Paul's comments, Paul's um, expectation for the people are for them. It, these are to be taken personally right? This is not something that we should be doing. Um, he does say that you should not, um, uh, da, da, da. yeah, that, that um, no fornicator or impure person, right, um, should be a part of you. But there is, in other places, he is also very clear that we need to, part of what our call is to, is to talk to those who are in need. Um, talk to those who are in need of redemption, um, that we don't just cut people off because there's then how else will, will they hear this gospel? So there's there's maybe this tension that we need to have. Um, yeah. Ultimately, he, uh, he sums it up with this, be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise making most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be, and he goes on about what, what's going on, but I think it's helpful to remind ourselves about this sort of thing, right? That the days are evil, the things that we see around us, um, the things that are normalized around us, um, sometimes they are really, truly evil. Sometimes we, we've got some deep problems around us in culture. Um, in government, in, in sort of every level. We also have deep problems within the church. Not, I'm not saying specifically 
you know, our congregation, um, but the wider church and and some of those elements may be in our congregation as well. So how do we see those things? How do we understand and reform those things? Um, how do we see, you know, those patterns that we see in the world around us? And how do we stop from duplicating them, especially within the church? How do we care for one another? How do we lift one another up? How do we encourage one another to to goodness, to, to eth- ethics, um, to, yes, draw away from fornication and greed, right? How do we encourage one another in all of this? This is part of the call that we have as the church. Then we have from the gospel reading, this is John. Um, there's a man who is blind from birth, and the disciples ask, you know, what, what was the reason for this man's blindness? The assumption is that there's, there's some sort of punishment that he has gotten. Either he did something terrible or his parents did something terrible. There's, there's a reason for this. And Jesus says, no, the reason for this is to show God's glory. This is just something that happened. But God is going to use this situation in order to show God's glory. And so he heals this man in a way that is very secret. This is um, maybe a, a glimpse ahead of this Sunday scripture where Jesus is very much in the background of this sign um, where this man goes and he he has mud put in his eyes by Jesus and then he goes and washes his face and he can see and he doesn't see Jesus. There's this whole section that we skipped over in today's reading where he's then brought before the 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 Sanhedrin, the the chief priests and the elders, and they say, what's going on here? Who healed you? And he says, well, I don't know who it was. And they say, well, we think it was this Jesus guy, and we know he's a sinner because uh, we don't like the things that he says. And this this nobody guy who used to be blind says, that's really strange because we know that God does not allow these these miraculous things to happen unless someone is connected with God. And here you are saying that he's a sinner. I don't think he's a sinner. Um, and they really don't like that. Um, Jesus finds him later and says, hey, take heart. Um, do you believe in the Son of Man? This is this messianic title. Do you believe in the one who has come? And he says, I would believe. I don't know who he is. And Jesus says, The one who's talking to you is he. And so he becomes a believer in this emerging kingdom of God and Jesus as the son of man. Um, Again, this is a person who is on the margins, who has been blind, who is sort of ostracized from the rest of his community, who is um, directly sort of downgraded and and, um, cursed by those who are in the religious sort of establishment and um, the chief priests and the scribes and all these sorts of things. Fascinating. It's a great story. All right. Those are our readings for today. Let's go ahead and join together in prayer. To you, O Lord, I lift my soul. O God, in you I trust. Eternal God, we thank you for being with us today and for every sign of your truth and love in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the gift of peace in Christ, reconciliation in our relationship, each new insight into your love, energy and courage to share your love, the ministries of the church. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for the call that we have as the body of Christ, for that high calling. We pray that you would seek out any wicked way in each of us. Help us in this new year to see any, anything that we need to change, ways that we need to learn and grow. Gracious God, we remember in our own hearts the needs of others that we may reach up to claim your love for them and reach out to give your love in the name of Christ. We also pray for racial harmony and justice. Those imprisoned. 
strangers we have met today. Friends who are bereaved. Orthodox and Coptic churches. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Carrie, a friend of Brittany's who lost her 17-year-old son in May and whose fiancé died the day after Christmas. We pray for Freddie um, as she is being put on hospice, hopefully to open up more um, possibilities, but with the view of end. We pray that all the paperwork and everything would be worked out and she would be well cared for. We pray for Greg, who is now back home, Um, after going to the hospital due to an angioedema. We lift up an online prayer request for Seth and his ministry, for Suzanne and Bob's son, who had a Tom who had open heart surgery this week and is recovering. We have continued prayers for Suzanne, a friend of Jan Ann's, for Tony, who is recovering from vascular surgery, for Mel and Carol's families who came in during the Christmas and New Year holidays, for friends of Mary's with health problems, for Lorraine and her daughter Amy, for Janice and her daughter Jennifer. We pray for Wayne's sister, Diane, who had gallbladder surgery yesterday and is recovering. We also pray for all of those who um, have COVID this this uh, week um, as people have gathered together. We pray that they would be very light cases and everyone would get back to um, to being together and back to normal life. But we pray for those who have been infected. O God, you loved the world so much that you gave your only Son for us. Increase and strengthen our faith and fix it firmly on the mystery of your word made flesh, that we may triumph over all evil through Christ who reigns now and forever. Amen. Now let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The word was made flesh. Alleluia, alleluia. And dwelt among us. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus, Son of the living God, splendor of the Father, light eternal. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, King of glory, Son of righteousness, born of the Virgin Mary, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Lord, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, Prince of peace, shepherd of souls, perfect in holiness, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, friend of all, protector of the poor, Treasure of the faithful, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, good shepherd, inexhaustible wisdom, our way, truth, and life, glory to you, O Lord. Jesus, joy to the angels and crown of all the saints, glory to you, O Lord. Christ is born. Give him glory. Christ has come down from heaven. Receive him. Christ is now on earth. Exalt him. O earth, sing to the Lord. O you nations, praise him in joy, for he has been glorified. Amen. Now the God of peace be with us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. 
Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA, 2018 edition. Our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And uh, yeah, go to our Facebook and our Instagram account for the near the end of our Advent and Christmas devotion. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.